it's time to fit seven more free 3D printable mods to this Ender 3. This Ender 3 continues to be a workhorse for me. It just prints and plows through whatever I throw at it. And that's why this printer is just exploding in popularity. In forums and Facebook and everywhere online, every time somebody asks what printer should I get, Ender 3 is generally the answer. A lot of Ender 3 owners are gonna be completely new to 3D printing, and hopefully by now they've worked out that modifying and improving the printer is one of the most enjoyable parts. I've already made a video fitting seven different mods to this, so here's part two. We've got seven more, so let's get started. First off, we're gonna start with this little one here. This was the most challenging one to print because it needs supports. I orientated as you can see here, and the purpose of this part is to cover the belt at the front here. It looks a little bit messy. I suppose it's possible to have some sort of pinch injury or get something caught in there if you're at the front of the printer. So let's get this one fitted. All you have to do is align it and then very carefully push down directly from above. It's gonna be a tight squeeze, but you'll find that it slides down into place and covers the end of the belt. Make sure you move the bed back and forward very gently just to ensure there's no snags on the new part and the belt. And if so, this one's done. Next up is this little one here that looks a little bit like a weapon. Now I have a problem with my printer in that when I move it to the very front, it springs back a little bit. And that's because I've got cable ties at the back holding the bed out of the way. I found when I was first printing that it was possible for all of the cables to snag on the back. And a couple of times I had to turn off the printer to rescue it from something being ripped out. First thing we need to do is to pull off this little cap over the extrusion, but then we realize we have our first problem. This part is meant to be held on with two bolts, but the extrusion is not actually threaded. Let's make this a little bit easier to work on and prop it up with something that everybody should have in stock, and that's a piece of carbon fiber tube. So to fit this, we need an M5 bolt, and I have a couple spare, and we can turn it to cut the thread because it's steel and the extrusion is only aluminium, but it gets really hard after a while. So what we're gonna do is drill it out, but not to the entire depth. So we're gonna get our bolt, put it through the plastic part, line it up with the drill bit, and then tape off the drill bit just a little bit from the end of the bolt. This means that if we drill and stop where the tape is, it's gonna leave us just a little bit of meat inside the extrusion. So now then when we come back with the screwdriver and screw it in, it cuts the thread just on the tip and everything is retained quite strongly without requiring too much effort. So we can now see with this slope here, it should be impossible for the wires to grab and get caught on there. And more importantly, when we turn it around to the front, we can see that we can move it to its frontmost position and there's nothing pulling it back. So it's got much freer travel through the range of motion. I don't know about you, but I reckon that got pretty serious. So let's move on to our simplest one here. If you don't squint, you probably won't see them. We've got six of these little clips and that's to address one of the main problems with the Ender 3. The early units shipped with too much wobble in the coupling for the Bowden extruder and this is the solution. We have this little part and pushing it towards the coupling releases the tube. If yours is wobbly and you're waiting for some replacement tube to come, this might get you over the line in the meantime. There's three different thicknesses. I printed all three for each end in under 10 minutes. So all you have to do is pick the one which seems the closest fit to you and you push it down in between the coupler and it can no longer open and therefore the tube should be retained just that little bit better. You might remember from my review, this thing here. This eliminates the micro SD card. So basically it slots into there and it's got a full size SD card slot on the other side. Only one problem is it's quite ungainly. If I move this one back and I plug it in, we've got this thing dangling out the front of the printer and that's not really functional or attractive. So what we have here is a part that we can print and fit to hold this out of the way with a little bit of cable management and make it a lot, lot tidier. So we'll notice on the underside we have the matching bit sticking out to fit into the extrusion. So we're going to unbolt the two bolts on the front left of the printer. You can put this anywhere else in the printer but this is the place that I have chosen. And once again I'm going to prop up the printer with my awesome carbon fibre tube. And then you should find that you can flex the electronics board down just enough to reveal the upper part of the extrusion. And then you get the piece 
slide it in. You might need to trim the edges just to help put it along. Give it a little bit of a tap and it should slowly but surely slide into place. If you're putting it here, you want it sitting flush with the front of the extrusion. Now we break out the actual adapter and we might as well have the logo facing up for our own instruction. We squeeze it, we fit it through the little hole in the back and we pull it through. We can then insert it the whole way in and we have this horrible dangling cable. Fortunately, if we unscrew the three screws for the electronics box and then plug it in, we can fold the ribbon cable very neatly and get it inside. Everything will try to get tangled, but just take your time and then get the three screws in when everything's held and everything will end up being quite neat. I reckon indeed. that's a pretty neat Big insole. Improvement. I've got the cable out of the way here and best of all, there's no pinch in the cable down here. So everything's tidy, everything should be worked. There's nothing dangling. And I'll leave a link in the description where you can buy some of these little adapters. Next up, we have this extruder knob or extruder wheel. It goes on top of the extruder and it gives you a way to twist the filament in and out if you've got the hot end turned on and you don't wanna to have to force the filament through the burden tube from the end after squeezing the extruder lever. There's a bunch of these on Thingiverse. I picked a pretty simple one, but there's ones with figurines, characters, all sorts of crazy things. Should be a really easy fit, so let's get it on. So the first thing I've done in preparation is to loosen the grub screws on my drive gear and move it down as low as I dare. Just making sure that the teeth still align with the bearing on the other side and the filament's not gonna jam or anything silly like that. On the inside of our printed part, there's one flat side. To fit this, it should simply be a matter of lining it up with the matching flat side on here and pushing it down with some force. And I do say some force because they claim that the tolerance is really tight and perhaps you need to print it oversized. I saw that after I printed it. So let's see how much pressure I actually need to get this on. Okay, it needed a fair bit of force, but I was actually expecting worse. Let's see how it works. Now it's not gonna do too much because the printer's not turned on and therefore the filament can't move in the hot end, but I do have a nice grip on that. And I imagine once it is turned on, it's gonna be really nice to dial that in and out to remove my filament and insert it and make it just a little bit easier. So you remember in my last video, I talked about tray sets to go in here. Well, I've bit the bullet and I've picked one to print. Once again, there's heaps of these on Thingiverse. I've picked one that was fairly simple to print and not overly complicated. To fit it, we should only need to remove two screws and they're the two on the front of the control panel here. So we've got this loose, but we can see we have a potential problem here. And that's that previously we fitted these two clips and they might get in the way of the drawer closing. So I think I've got a fairly simple solution for that. This one on this side, we're gonna push all the way underneath the center extrusion. And the one on this side, we're gonna move in line and then slide it out until it comes off. Next thing we're gonna do is tilt up the printer and we're actually gonna put the cable under and run it over this side. This now gives us the clearance that we need to slide in the notches on each side into the extrusions. Just a little bit of flexing on this side and we are all fitted. I like the way everything is flush across the front now. All that remains is to get our two bolts and put them back into place on the front cover. Looks like there still might actually be a little room here. When I close the drawer, I can see there's about a finger space in there. So I'm gonna get this clip back in, just to hold the cable out of the way so it doesn't snag when the drawer opens and shuts. Great, that's super neat. And that brings us to lucky number seven. And this one is a little bit odd, if I'm honest. Now I recently made a video on fitting stepper motor dampers and I've got those on the X and Y axis and it really quietened this thing down. It was only as loud as an average 3D printer, but if you're on a 3D printer, you know they're not particularly quiet. This is an alternate solution to that. And these are little feet. They're a two part design. I've put three of them together, but I've left the last one to show you exactly how it works. We've got an inner and an outer piece. The outer piece has the cutouts facing inwards and vice versa. We put this piece in, we squeeze it, we turn it sideways, and with a satisfying click, everything should lock into place. 
and we find that these are a little bit springy and they go underneath the extrusion and they're going to hold the printer up off the table and try and reduce some of that noise. If you don't want to spend any money at all on the dampers, well this maybe is a solution for you. So we're going to tilt this up and I believe they're meant to go underneath the rubber factory feet, not into the actual extrusion. Well they're on and they seem to fit not too bad. I think if I lift up the printer, they're going to fall off. So personally, I would go for the stepper motor dampers and keep this nice and portable like it is now. I love how you can just pick it up by the top, take it to another room, put it in your car, take it somewhere else to print. However, I do applaud the lateral thinking. I never would have thought of coming up with that solution. So I guess it's up to you to see if you want to try it. It's a fairly quick print and not much plastic. Now, what do we have here? We have here an honorable mention and inside this is a Raspberry Pi. You might've noticed all of the Octolapses in this video. I am converting all of my printers over to Octoprint. I think it's worthwhile. This here is a special case for Raspberry Pi. And basically you put some bolts in here. You screw the two halves together. You then use these mounting bosses to mount to some spare bits of T-nuts to go in the V-slot and basically you mount it somewhere to the frame. So I've seen pictures of people mounting it on the side here. I think a nice spot would actually be underneath the control panel over here. There's just enough room for it there, quite discreet. Basically it gets it off the table, needens everything up, and it's probably worthwhile if you're gonna run with a Raspberry Pi. That makes seven, well eight actually, you've got a bonus one again. 3D printable mods that you can do to your Ender 3. These ones are maybe a little bit hit and miss depending on your preference, but it's food for thought and you might have fun just experimenting. What is coming up on the channel regarding this printer? Well, all of this was printed in ABS. I was using up an old roll that I had lying around and I had that same issue that came up in my review where the sheet delaminated from the bed. So I'm definitely going to explore some different options for that. The BL Touch video is coming, I promise. It still has not come in the mail. The pin 27 board that I'm using. However, great news. I have over here an easy ABL. It took just over a week for this to come from the USA. I don't know why that other thing is taking so long for the BL Touch. This one shouldn't take me too long to fit. I'll have this video out soon. Hopefully soon after that, I'll have the BL Touch video out to help you make a comparison between the two if you want to add automatic bed leveling to your printer. That's going to wrap it up. Hopefully you found some interesting prints here. Let me know in the comments, have I missed anything that's really good? Anything really worthwhile? Are you going to print any of these? Start the discussion down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.